Hey everybody, it's Scott Steen with WinnersandWiners.com coming to you from the Hammer and Hank studio on the expansive first floor of the Winners and Winers Sports and Entertainment Complex to bring you today's Deep Three. As always, if you would be so kind, digging what we're doing, give us the old thumbs up and consider if you would subscribing to our YouTube channel. Uh, we appreciate all the business as always. And of course, let us know what you're playing today. What are you on, tailing the deep three? Uh, maybe you're fading the deep three. We've been a little chilly here the last couple of days. Uh, whatever it is, put your plays in the comment section. Give us up, give us your best, uh, best five, if you would. We'll get those graded up. You get them right, we'll give you the shout out. Get enough of them right, just like Hammer and Hank. You're going to be our capper of the day. All right. And of course, don't forget to check out winnersandwinners.com and statsalt.com. Deep dives into Every game going on in America every single day, especially deep dives into those nationally, uh, uh, those national games like Sunday night, Monday night, and Thursday night. No one does a deeper dive anywhere on the interweb for free or faux money. So check that out, won't you? And um, that's it. That's pretty much. That's pretty much. That's pretty much it. Yeah, we hit all the uh, we hit all the big ones, and we can't uh, we can't avoid it anymore. So let's take a look and. Uh, well, a quick little recap of, uh, of uh, yesterday's action, shall we? It wasn't uh, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty at all on the deep three side. As we had Army plus the points, man, looked good there early in the game. In fact, most of the first half it looked like we were doing a pretty good job. The Army defense was really stout, and uh, Navy eventually just wore them down. Though they were able to take a uh, lead there before halftime and never looked back. As Navy ended up covering that number. And then we had the, uh, we had the, uh, the Tulsa and uh, Arkansas game, and that was uh, that was not that was not pretty at all. The uh, we had the under there, and it was uh, it was not under. It was uh, Arkansas put up I think they put up ninety eight. They put up a ton. I know they put up over ninety in this game. That was brutal, just brutal. And speaking of brutal, uh, hey Dayton may be for real. We took. Uh, we took Drake and a buttload of points, and we needed a couple of buttloads against uh, Dayton. That uh, that team, you know what? And we played them before. We played Dayton before. I knew how good they were. I just thought Drake would have a little bit more form, but they did not. And that, my friends, is how you go 0-3. Do that two days in a row. That's how you go 0-6. So, yikes is all you can say about that. All you can do is <laughs> keep moving forward and know that the numbers will eventually save you, and it will turn around. Why? Because it always does. Always does. All right? So, um, imminently fadeable right now. Will that end today? I don't know. On the, on, the, on the other side of the coin, on the premium side, we went 3-0. and As we had the Army-Navy under, faded almost each and every one of you. Uh, as we played the under, we played that trend to hit for the 14th time in a row. me Yep. Donkeys that we were. Uh, but it paid off for us one more time. Uh, we had uh, St. Louis... Billikens uh, catching 12 from Auburn. I thought Auburn was a little overvalued in that spot, and that turned out, turned out to be the case. And we had the KU Jayhawks uh, playing at the Sprint Center here in Kansas City against the UMKC Kangaroos, uh, laying, 40, laying 23, ended up winning by, yeah, I don't know what the final, I think right around 40 was uh, where that was. So 3-0 uh, and we go there, 0-3 oh, we go there. It's a 500 day. On we go with today's picks. First of all, we're going to start with uh, Hammer and Hank making his cap for the day, play of the day, the COD, POD, if you will. Uh, he uh, likes the uh, uh, Giants and the Dolphins over 40. What is that? Uh, boy, my bad eyes. Uh, 46, I think is what it says right there, guys. If it's, if it's 45, don't uh, don't sue me. Uh, yep, yeah, 46. Sorry. Sorry. Um, so, um, good luck on that one, Hank. Thanks for post posting the play. Uh, I don't hate that. I don't hate that at all. Those uh, uh, Miami certainly been undervalued. Giants have a terrible defense. We'll see what happens. Don't, I don't hate that pick. So uh, we're going to start off taking a look there in the NFC as the Rams and the Cowboys get together and dance down there in the Jerry Dome. Uh, you know what? We can talk stats and matchups till the cows come home, but there's two big factors for me in this game. Um, number one, Dallas can lose this game, still control their own destiny. They beat Philly next week and Washington to finish the season. Ta-ra! They win the East with a 500 record. Now for the Rams, playoffs for them started two weeks ago as they were uh, 
They're still looking up at the Seahawks in the, and the Vikings for a wild card spot. Uh, most Clayton Van Der Esch, and they're really down to four linebackers, including Sean Lee, who didn't even practice all week with a bad pectoral. Uh, he's, word is he's going to go, but how effective will he be? Well, we will find out. Now, the Rams, they played their best football of the year the last two weeks. No reason to think it's not going to continue versus that train wreck that is the Dallas Cowboys right now. Give me the Rams. We'll do the money line here. Uh, you can you can lay the one you can you can take Rams uh, plus the one for minus 115 or you can take the Rams straight up for a minus 119. So I like the uh, I, I like the or excuse me minus excuse me minus minus one sorry um, yeah okay sorry brain fart there take the Rams money line minus 119 all right that's what I'm, that's what I'm telling you yeah you can. Uh, you can take them. You can grab the point for minus one fifteen, or you can take them straight up minus one nineteen. I like that. I like that. That uh, that's good value. All right. So sorry. Um, I'm still thinking about zero and six. <laughs> uh, the Vikings and the Chargers is our next play. Chargers uh, one point road dog in this one. You know, LA has been playing lights out on the defensive side lately. They've given up less than three hundred total yards for their last five games. The only exception is giving up 310 to Kansas City. Um, no shame in that. But here's the deal. It hasn't really translated to victories as they've gone just 2-3 and three over that stretch. But they've lost the other three by a total of 12 points. Close games have a way of kind of evening themselves out. And here's a, kind of the telling thing with the Chargers. Their point, they have a point differential this season of plus 38. That is better than Houston. It's better than Seattle. It's just one worse than Green Bay. And it's just 10 worse than the New Orleans Saints. In other words, the Los Angeles Chargers have deserved a better fate. Today, I think they get it. Give me the Chargers plus the one point at home against the Minnesota Vikings. And we're going to finish it off with a play uh, here near and dear to my heart as the Broncos and Chiefs get together at Arrowhead Stadium right down the road from me. Uh, I'm looking at the total here of 44 and a half. And guys, I think we're going to get some good value here. Uh, this is going to be a weather game. Snow is in the forecast. It sounds like we should get one to three inches during the game. And I think this number is going to probably fall before kickoff as people get, a, get up, start hearing that weather report. I wouldn't be surprised if we can catch this at 44 or even 43 and a half. So stay tuned. Don't get an itchy trigger finger. See what happens with this number. I almost guarantee it ain't going up. Uh, the Chiefs offense is healthy, uh, except for running back Damian Williams. He is questionable, but the, the Chiefs really have... Uh, kind of a plug-and-play system there in the backfield. Damian Williams is not head and shoulders above um, uh, above uh, Shady McCoy and the other Williams, Daryl Williams, and uh, this kid they're trying to get a few more touches uh, that uh, ran the ball last week. So that's uh, that's not really a big deal with the Chiefs. Andy, not afraid to use any running back in this system. Uh, the Denver defense, they haven't been great lately. They've given up over 400 yards two of their last three. Uh, Chiefs defense, everybody's been talking about that. They have definitely been the bright spot lately. But Drew Locke has been very good in his two games as a starter. Now, I say that with the caveat because I spent a lot of the week watching all 22 of both of his games. He still makes weird decisions, not necessarily good decisions. And that was kind of his that was kind of his hallmark at Mizzou. So that's not surprising. I wouldn't be surprised to see him make a mistake or two. It hasn't really jumped up and bit him yet. So we'll see what happens. On the other side of the coin... Um, I like back in young quarterbacks that have talent in their first few games before the league really gets a book on them. And I think we've got a situation like that here. Um, if anything, I think the conditions are going to for force the teams to probably go for it a little more on fourth down as they uh, eschew your long field goals in the 45-plus uh, range. And they'll probably go for first downs anytime you get fourth down and five or less. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing with these two offenses uh, they've been moving the ball well, and I think that uh, probably works to our advantage as we get uh, as we trade field goals for uh, the you know you trade two you trade two field goals for uh, one drive that ends in a touchdown you've you've come out okay and I think that's the case in this one. Uh, I'm going to be a contrarian here, guys. I know there's going to be a lot of money coming in on the under. I like the other side of it. There's going to be no wind, got a little snow, but I think most players would tell you they'd rather play in snow than rain any day of the week, especially on Sunday. Let's take the Chiefs and the Broncos over 
44 and a half right now, but expect that number to fall. All right, so we're going to play that one. We're also going to play the San, uh, <laughs> Los Angeles Chargers plus the one point. And we'll start it off with the Rams on the money line at minus 119 at the end of those three games. Turning this ship around, kids. Finish the weekend strong. You guys can join me. We will pick up our winning tickets and we will head back to the window. All right. All right, guys. Let's take a look and see what we've got here cooked up as far as the shout outs go. By the way, if you want to get down on the premium picks, uh, happy to have you aboard. We will put the link up in the description of the video. We're currently running. Uh, where are we at? We're, we're uh, 500 for the, for the uh, month of December. And our football plays with college and pro combined on the premium side are 55.5%. So uh, get yourself down if that is something that interests you. All right. Shout outs for today. You know how it works. If you put the, we're nice enough to take time to put some verbiage up there. I'll, uh, I'll comment on that. And then we'll talk about how you guys did. Bronco Devil says, I lived in Baltimore and the Colts left. Had season tickets in Houston and the Oilers left. And now I have abandonment issues. <laughs> um... Well, if you're in Denver, dude, uh, those that team isn't going anywhere. The Broncos, I think, are, are here for the stay. Uh, then he says, Navy seniors have never beat Army. Navy has a bowl. He said, this is it for Army. 13 unders in a row. And, of course, I'm on the Army-Navy over. <laughs> like a stockbroker on Garrett Cole. Man, he's got some uh, seriously good, what is that, a simile, right? Yeah, yeah as, as was. Yeah. My English days are long past. Uh, Mark Desaad. Said, my frightening five for the weekend is Navy minus 10. And this is going to be hell to pay for the last three years. And then parlayed with any of your favorite five teams playing on Sunday. Like uh, It's like going to the horse races and, and uh, key, keying the horse on top with the 2-3, uh, 2-3 two, three, two, three all or something like that. Playing the uh, playing the trifectas and what Cornells and whatnot. Uh, pray the Zebras make it go your way. Oh, uh, yes. There has been some, offici uh, some, some uh, questionable officiating. Confused Oracle. Oh, man, I love you. <laughs> he says, uh, I think you have a good shot at 3-0 and today because I just hate all your contrarian picks, and I have been way off lately. And then later on, he said, I absolutely need to attend the Army-Navy game. Yep, I agree. I agree with that. Best football game of the year. And then uh, later in the day, he says, Scott, you're on your way to 0-6. Uh, we got there, baby. Uh, that is not easy to do, seriously. Well, if you can do it, I can do it here. You know what? A week ago, we were what, we, we, we went with 10-1. Uh, and 1. Over the, over the stretch there, and now we're 0-6. Uh, you know what? It happens. It absolutely happens. We'll pull out of the we'll pull out of the funk like uh, George Clinton's hat. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Dave Cover says, I'm drinking early today. Got my side Christmas today as we travel to my wife's family on the actual Christmas day. So, Navy minus 10 and over 40 and a half. Here's the deal. Vegas is getting slammed on the under for years. The total is way too low. Uh, is it okay? Drinks are flowing now. I just doubled up on the over. And took Army plus 10 and a half. Oh, Dave. Uh, hopefully Navy wins by 10, so I push and win and win the Army. Uh, all right, whatever. Back to drinking. <laughs> well, Dave, I hope uh, hope the hangover isn't too bad here uh, today. Uh, Barry Tran. <laughs> Barry keeping it real. So ever since I started watching you, I swear you lose way with extra wise. Way more than you win. You freaking suck, dude. I'm going to go completely opposite every pick. Barry, did you pick the right day to do that, my friend? Uh, congratulations on going 3-0. and Eminently fatable. Hopefully you're watching today. Don't forget to subscribe, man. If we're out there making money for you, make sure that you at least give us the reach around. All right, give us, I mean, give us the subscribe. Um, all right, so here's the deal, Barry. Uh, I did look at our records. Now, for overall, our overall football picks this year, every football pick, and this is not counting preseason when we absolutely rocked it. We were 75% we were in preseason. That's, man, that's no bullshit. Um, but I don't count preseason. So in the NFL... NCAA put together, we are 130, 108, and 3. That works out to 53.4%. Uh, so far in basketball, we're 17 and 14 on the NBA, 15, 17, and 1 on the NCAA. <clears throat> so <clears throat> there's the real numbers uh, since baseball has been over. So hopefully, uh, you know, if, you, if you've got somebody rocking out there that's, uh, that's doing better, I hope, you, uh, I hope you stick with them and wish you the best of luck. Thanks very much for commenting, Barry. Always appreciate it. Uh, Nick Rampero said, it's never easy. Nope, it isn't, Nick. Except for you today, brother, but we'll get to that. Uh, Jimmy Jack, this is troubling. Scotty, uh, Jimmy Jack said, Scotty, you had it right when you said players are uh, making the ultimate sacrifice for company, uh, play, for their for companies, not country. I wish it wasn't that way. The truth wins. Um, okay, 
if I said that and I'm not and, and I'm <laughs> I have no doubts that I did. I'm not I didn't go back and look, but I absolutely misspoke. You guys know how I am. Um, <laughs> I did not mean companies. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy Jack, I appreciate your position, and we could talk about corporate influence and all that all day long, but. He, uh, I absolutely meant to say country. So if I if I had a mental slip there or a slip of the tongue, I apologize, everybody. Uh, those young gentlemen out there uh, are absolutely making the sacrifice for uh, the, our country. So I and I'm glad you told me, and I'm I'm glad we could clear that up because everybody's like going, "What? You kind of a dick." Um, Derek Saunders said, uh, "Anyone else on the over forty and a half in the NCAA football?" Yeah, Derek, everybody. <laughs> um, and uh, Miguel and Noah said, "Scott, I'm a, I'm a Navy uh, Chief Petal. Uh, I'm a Navy Chief Petty Officer. Go Navy! Uh, go Navy! Beat Army! Absolutely!" And Miguel, thanks very much for your service, of course. Uh, and that's pretty cool. That's are you are you active duty? I mean, I didn't. Are you active duty right now? I didn't know. So uh, very very cool. In fact, we just had uh, went and did a little uh, <clears throat> a wedding reception. Kind of a delay. They got they they eloped and they came back for my uh, nephew who is in the uh, 101st Airborne. Just got back from Syria, so uh, yeah, it was kind of, kind of hitting uh, a little close to home. So again, thanks for your service. Thanks for all that you do, so the rest of us wankers can uh, and do what we do. So much appreciated. And uh, on a sad note, we're gonna end the shout outs. Uh, Hammered Hank said we buried my mom on Friday. Uh, she put a little sprinkle on me to help me uh, from above to be winner and the capper of the day. Miss you, mom. R.I.P. Uh, and he said we're gonna post later what she did. And uh, I. Of course, as I always am with you guys, was extremely impressed and proud of the uh, the outpouring of affection and condolences uh, for Hank. And it's a it's a tough deal. Everybody talked about kind of losing their own mom, and I, I lost mine um, uh, twenty three years ago, and uh, which is uh, it kind of a, a you know it's bad enough losing your mom, but the bad part is my mom never got to see uh, never got to see my twins, which was. Uh, a very, I, I, she would have liked them a lot. She really would have. So, uh, Hank, you know what, man? I think a lot of us have been there, and we all feel your pain, brother. And uh, of course, uh, Mike, Mike's sincerest condolences from my family um, to yours, brother. It, uh, it does, it does get, uh, it does get better, but it's, it's a, it's a tough deal. I ain't gonna lie. And uh, anybody that's been there, <clears throat> they know that that's true. So, um, hope that she continues to sprinkle you. And I uh, hope that you uh, continue your good run, brother. You're a good man, and uh, we appreciate it, all right? So, with that being said, let's go on with uh, uh, today's records. We've got um, our uh, guys with perfect attendance. That list is as far follows. The Confused Oracle, Daniel Ruan, True Grit 2411, Derek Saunders, Kent P., and Cyrus Quing. Uh, Assassin Sports, Ninja 13, and Mean Green all got juice today. And our earners, our money makers. Uh, had a few of you. Uh, Mad Carrot out there going 3-2 and two plus 80. Hammer and Hank, 3-2 and two plus 80. Our reigning champion, another profitable day, Hank. Well done. Steve Godon, 3-1 and one plus 190. And he's at it again, everybody. His only loss was when he uh, faded my premium pick on the uh, on the under, uh, on the Army-Navy game. But Nick Romparo goes 3-1 and one straight up. He goes 1-0 and oh on his parlay. How about plus four sixty four? Very nicely done, Nick. That's a that's a hell of a run you've been on, man. I don't know how long, like ten days or so. What have you been like three times cap today? Four times? Hell of a run, hell of a run, brother. Nicely done. Three and one, one and zero, oh, plus four sixty four. Nick Rampero. Once again, you, my friend, are our capper of the day. Nick, if you got a pod uh, for the Monday night game or anything else that's going on in the basketball world, you want to turn us on to for Monday. Um, be be sure to do that as well. You always uh, put up put up a pretty good POD. Sometimes you even uh, share a little parlay with us. So uh, yeah, we appreciate it. So for the rest of you guys, let's get out there and get it done. All right, it's NFL. It's Sunday. Time to make that money. But no matter what happens, you guys, we'll meet back here. Uh, yeah, let's call it 24 hours from now. We'll do. What we'll always do. We'll probably bitch about the referees. We'll bitch about those bad beats. We'll brag about our fat stacks, and then. Be time for Monday Night Football and another week of basketball. We'll just jump in there. We'll fire it up, and we'll do it all over again. All right? You guys have a great day. Good luck on all of your plays, and I'll see you all back at the window. Take care.